All right, guys, this is part B of lesson three, and so we just just watched the video on part A, and with part A, we were finding out values of sine and cosine. Uh, we did an example where we had to find the radius that was not one and figure out the sine and cosine from there. We did an example uh, where we were given one of the values. We were given, um, we are actually given tangent, and we used tangent to find sine and cosine of theta. And then we wrapped up with just writing down uh, the sine, cosine, and tangent of some special angles, really, that come from uh, the right triangle there. Um, so what we're going to do now is going to be, we're going to include our reference angles. And remember, reference angles are those little acute angles that, um, that lie between the terminal side of an angle and the uh, closest horizontal axis. Um, and so we're going to figure out the points on a circle centered at our origin uh, and we want to focus today on angles that do not lie in quadrant one uh, in order to determine exact function values for sine and cosine. So we're still working with sine and cosine here uh, and we're still going to be using some of our properties that we have here. So just to recap right here, what we have is if we have theta that's an angle in standard position with xy on that terminal side of theta, um, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to find sine, cosine, and tangent. And so remember, we've done this a couple times here. Um, just remember that sine, okay, gave us, it was y over r. And we, we mentioned that before. It's the y coordinate over the radius. And again, we say that because now we're getting into, into things where radius is not always 1. And then cosine is x over r and we said that the tangent was y over x or the slope of that line and so if you rearrange some things and we want to figure out um, how to get y and x by themselves you know what that turns out that y is equal to r times the sine of theta just by multiplying both sides by r that means that x is equal to r times the cosine of theta multiplying both sides by r again and then right here tangent is just the slope of that terminal line okay that terminal line of that angle right there and so if we're trying to figure out some coordinates here let's look at example six so given an angle measure theta is four pi over three so we're dealing with radians in standard position Okay, so standard position has the initial side along the positive horizontal axis. And a circle with a radius of 5 centered at the origin, find the coordinate points of P, we want to find X and Y, of the angle where the terminal ray intersects the circle. And I want you to get used to that terminology, where the terminal ray intersects the circle. You're going to see that a lot here coming up. So the thing is, some of you might not be that familiar just yet with... Um, with your uh, radian measures and so you see 4 pi over 3 and you're not quite sure you should be again working through that unit circle making sure you become familiar with it but just in case uh, if you need to we can always say 4 pi over 3 we can convert that to degrees which would be 180 over pi and that would be 240 degrees and so that 4 pi over 3 is 240 degrees so you see right here, here's the terminal side, and that is 4 pi over 3, or 240. Okay, looking at it both ways. So that's 4 pi over 3, um, or 240. Now, so that's 240 degrees, which means our reference angle, remember that's the angle that's closest to the closest horizontal axis is going to be 60 degrees or pi over 3. Okay, 60 degrees or pi over 3. So that means our reference angle here is 60 degrees, just there between. So what we're going to do is our reference angle, we're going to call that theta prime. So we want to figure out what the x and the y coordinates are using these formulas from up top. We want to use those to figure out what these x and y coordinates are. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, well, x equals 
r times the cosine of theta. All right. Well, the radius was 5. And we're going to use the reference angle of pi over 3 to figure out what that is. And so that's 5. The cosine of pi over 3, if you think back to your uh, unit circle, the x value of pi over 3 is 1 half. So 5 times 1 half is going to be 5 halves. So that's the x coordinate. And then we can find the y coordinate by doing r times the sine of theta. Again, we're using the reference angle pi over 3. Radius is 5. And then the sine of theta, the sine of pi over 3, is actually root 3 over 2. And that comes from the unit circle. And so we end up with 5 root 3 over 2. All right, so our x, y coordinates are negative 5 halves and 5 root 3 over 2. And both of these are negative for the simple fact of, look where they're at. They're in quadrant 3, okay? So therefore, we know that x has to be negative and y has to be negative for the simple fact that we're in quadrant 3, okay? So that's the xy coordinates of 4 pi over 3 in quadrant 3. Now that's with a radius of 5. Don't get this confused with, well, if you look at the unit circle, 4 pi over 3 has some different coordinates there. Uh, if you look at the mm -hmm. unit circle, 4 pi over 3, when the radius is 1, has coordinates of negative 1 half and negative root 3 over 2. But again, we're changing that up now, and the radius is now 5, so our coordinates are a little bit different there. Okay, so don't get that confused right there. <coughs> All right, let's flip over. Take a look at 7, 8, 9, and 10 here. And so for 7, we said that we can find x and y by doing r times the cosine of theta for x and um, r times the sine of theta. It says it terminates in quadrant 2. So right off the bat, I know that y is positive and x is negative. And the cosine of theta is negative 1 third. Okay, and remember cosine is x over r. So x is negative 1, r is 3. So that tells me right off the bat that this is negative, this is 3. Sorry, I didn't mean to put that and then x is negative 1, so this distance is here, negative 1. So what we got to do is we want to find the value of sine. So we have a right triangle there. So what we can do is use our theorem we get 1 plus y squared equals 9. y squared equals 8, which means y equals 2 root 2. Okay, so that's our y coordinate there. The sine now becomes, because remember our radius is 3 now, not just 1, becomes 2 root 2 over 3. Again, if this was a unit circle, once we found that 2 root 2, we could have stopped and said that's sine, because in the unit circle, the radius is 1. However, we have a radius of 3 here, so we have to change that up a little bit. Alright, so we want to find all values between 0 and 2 pi. And remember, 2 pi is one complete revolution around that circle. So we're going to start at the beginning and make one complete revolution around the circle. We want to find all values of theta where cosine is equal to 0. Now remember cosine. Alright, cosine is the x coordinate. So where is the x coordinate 0? Well, if you think about, it's only going to be on the coordinates. And so we start here. This is 1, 0. They didn't tell us a radius, so we assume 1. This is 0, 1. This is negative 1, 0. This is 0, negative 1. So remember, cosine means that well, where the x coordinate 0. Well, that's going to be 
that the cosine of theta equals zero at pi over two, which is 90 degrees, and three pi over two, which is 270. So the two places where x equals zero, here and here, that's pi over two, and that's three pi over two. Take a look at nine here. We've got the tangent of theta is four over three. So that means y is four, x is three. And cosine of theta is negative. So here's the thing. Tangent is positive, but cosine is negative. The x coordinate is negative, which means there's only one quadrant that this angle can be in, and that's in quadrant three, where both x and y are negative, because when you divide a negative by a negative, you get a positive. So we're going to find sine and cosine theta and the coordinates where the terminal side of the angle intersect the circle. So I told you x equals, in this case, like I said, if, whoops, if cosine is less than zero and tangent of theta is greater than zero, then sine of theta has to also be less than zero. Okay, and that means we're in quadrant three. So the x coordinate is actually negative three squared. The y coordinate is negative four squared, which they're gonna be positive anyway. That's gonna be nine four, that means our radius is gonna be five. So what we have here in quadrant three All right, our x coordinate is negative three, y coordinate is negative four, radius equals five. Okay, so remember the sine is y over r, so the sine of theta, y over r, which means negative four fifths, cosine of theta, is x over r, which is negative three-fifths. Okay, there you go. And then the last example here, guys, we got a real-world problem here. A machine shop needs to drill through a steel plate at point P, you see over there. Calculate the actual measurement for the placement of the hole, then use your calculator to approximate the location. Well, here's the thing. We got a radius of 14. We have an angle of 25 degrees. So, if you look back at the very beginning, for y. So to find the x here, what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, x equals r cosine theta, which means the radius of 14 times the cosine of 25 degrees. And you want to make sure for this problem, your calculator is in degree mode because the units given to us are in degrees. So x is approximately 12.688. Okay? And then y is r times the sine of theta, which is 14 times the sine of 25, which is approximately 5.917. So we need to drill at the xy coordinate of 12.688 and 5.917 in quadrant one. So again, become familiar with these formulas, guys, how to find x and y when the radius is not one. And uh, just make sure you're still working on memorizing that unit circle. It's going to be very helpful here over the next couple weeks. Um, and then make sure you're comfortable using Pythagorean theorem. But get familiar with which quadrants x is positive in, which quadrants y is positive in, uh, and then also your trig ratios. Make sure you're, you're studying up on sine being y over r, cosine being x over r, and then tangent is y over x. And then eventually we'll get into the inverses, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So have a good day.